Hi, I'm Dan Robbins. I'm the principal here at the Hardin County Schools Early College and Career Center. And we're excited uh, this week uh, that we are welcoming eighth graders from across our district uh, to visit EC3 and Hardin County Schools pathway options uh, that are available to them as early as their freshman year. Anybody in sports? Anybody in band? Anybody in choir? Anybody in drama? Musicals? Do any type of afternoon activities, sports, any community events in Hardin County? Most likely, at some point, one of us is going to be there with a camera and film. All right? What's this called? Tripod. Why is it called a tripod? It's three legs. What do you call a two-legged tripod? A bipod. A broken one. You can't have a tripod if it's only got two legs. See? I didn't get to tell my joke this morning, so I better make up for it now. So everything, we are always streaming, there's always something. Local channels, cable channel 2, or on YouTube, there's always that. You can always check it out, you might see yourself in it, because we're always out and about. Right now, we're filming for channel 2 over here. Jacob behind the camera is recording, that will then be on HCEC TV. Alright, that's what we do. You have the opportunity as a media arts student to work your way up to become an intern. An intern is then not really in the classroom. You are at the studio or throughout the district recording during the day, during your class period. It's a really cool experience. You get to mess around with the cameras. You get to do some editing. We get you Adobe certified. And you can start doing a bunch of stuff or making YouTube videos for your friends. Whatever, whatever pops up in here, you read it up there. But for pretty much all for this, it's like you just press start prompting. And this button, this button makes you go faster, and this one makes you go slower. And this is the receiver, and you put it like up here, and like this like gets the audio for like those kind of microphones. And this, this is um like the microphone that you hook up your shirt. And it got a windbreaker, which like I guess makes it like more clear to hear. And if you get all like step in front of the telephone too. Come on. Yes. What you want to do is try and get your person waist up with a little bit of headroom. You can zoom in for this, you can tilt for this. Really, it's kind of, it depends on the situation, what's easier, kind of how well you work, I guess. You just want to make sure the person you have the camera on is like in view, like usually yeah. waist up. Yeah. You don't want to get like below the waist. They don't need to see that, okay? <laughs> uh, you also want to make sure your person does not have backlight. So backlight is exactly what it says on the tin. Um, I don't know why I always phrase it like that, but it's literally just you have a bright light in the back of your person, making their front very dark, very like hard to see, and also the rest of the area around them will glow, which is kind of a bad shot. <laughs> so you don't want that, but we don't have to worry about that here because we're faced against a wall. Usually you're going to have that problem when, in, when you're faced towards windows, also your thing fell off. Um, you're going to have that problem when faced towards windows, towards LEDs. Speaking of LEDs, there's one right here, which I do not suggest turning on because it is very bright. You can also, this is called panning, then you can unlock this little doohickey here. It's very loud. Oh yeah, the mic is going to be very loud. It, in some cases, but you can tilt, you can pan, you can try and get further in shot here. Also, if your person is moving, you want to have a good amount of leading room here in case, you know, in the direction they're moving. So, they're moving this way, you want to have all the leading room here. If they're moving that way, you want to try and have the leading room over here. It all depends on where they're moving, how they're moving, how fast, stuff like that. 
Tripods are what we set up for cameras when we're using cameras. Um, we call it a tripod because it has three legs. Um, her tripod is already fully set up with the camera. I'm just going to show you the process of setting it up and then I'm going to let you set one up on your own just to see how it works. So basically to let the legs down, all you have to do is unlatch these pieces and just let them go all the way down. Um, make sure you close them back though because you don't want the legs to come back up when you put it on the ground. Um, so now you just spread the legs out. Make sure it's leveled though because when you're recording you don't want it to be unleveled and the camera uneven. So and the way that you make sure that the legs are leveled is you look at this green right here and there's basically like an air bubble in it. If that air bubble is in the center of the circle, then that's how you know it's leveled. Um, these screws right here are, you can unscrew it. This one is for, to bring it up and down. This one, you can unscrew so that you'll be able to move it better. Like say if you're interviewing somebody and they're moving a lot or recording somebody, and you need to be able to follow them. So um, the type of camera I'm gonna put on here, is this one. Um, you see, her camera is kind of different. Her base is more of a rectangle and my base is more of a square. Um, so how we put this, the base on here is, basically this screw goes right here. So all you have to do is put this in this hole and screw it with this handle right here. You want to screw it tight enough to where it won't come off, but not too tight to where you can't take it off. So. Right here, it says lock and free. Free means nothing's on here already, and if I do put this on here while I still am free, the camera's just gonna fall off. So when I put this on here and it snaps to lock, that's when the camera is secure and it won't come off. So this has been giving us a struggle all day, but I'm gonna see if it'll work. Okay, now, now it's on lock and the camera is secure and it won't come off. Um, now I'm gonna show you how the camera turns on so basically you just open the screen right here and it's dark and that's because these these are closed and the way you open that is right here so so this camera you can use really for anything um, so how you use this is to zoom in and out right here so the way you zoom in is to go to the right and to zoom out there's the left. Um, so I'll let y'all set up a tripod on, on your own. I'll let y'all do this one. This one is a bit heavier and it's a bit of a struggle, but it's okay. So basically you just do the unlatches. Yes, unless both. You can help her if you like. It's, Now just make sure you close them back so the legs could be secure. See, you have to make sure you close them before they touch the ground. Because you don't want the legs to come back up. Now you have to make sure the tripod is at level. How do I make sure it's level? See, these legs. Okay, sometimes it doesn't look, yeah. So basically that's how you set it up. Hi, welcome to Automotive Technology. In this class you're gonna work, you're gonna learn and work on cars, hence the name Automotive Technologies. To begin this pathway, you're gonna uh, have to be a sophomore to start this class. So what you're gonna have to do is, uh, during your sophomore class, you'll be coming in here third period during high school. You're gonna spend a lot of time in the classroom learning about shop safety, uh, different, tech, uh, different types of tools to use on different kind of cars, and you're gonna learn about the different time, kind of cars that are gonna be coming in here. Um, after that, your junior year, senior year, you're actually gonna be um, taking maintenance light repair, A through D, A, B, C, D, like the song. This is uh, maintenance light repair, part C. I'm nearing the end of this pathway. Um, so in this pathway, we are working towards 10 AFC certifi or AC ASE certifications, meaning that when you get all those 10, uh, you'll be a master tech. But you really only need two, and that's electricity and engines. Uh, but the more you have, the more job opportunities are going to be open to you right out of high school. 
So please, strive to get those 10. Um, so in this class, uh, if you take maintenance light repair part A and D, or part A through D, uh, you're, it's a two and a half long hour class. Uh, you're gonna be spending half the class in the classroom. After that, after you get those knowledges, you're gonna learn the different systems, uh, your engines, your electricity, your AC, your steering, your uh, suspension. You're gonna learn everything there is to know about a car. After you do that, uh, for the next half of the class, you come out here, you're gonna take that knowledge, you're gonna put it to the test on our project cars out here. This class is strictly project based, so we're not just switching parts, seeing which, seeing which goes where. We're not doing that. We have to look up service information, we have to look up different kind of specs, we have to look up everything to make sure everything is correct. With that being said, two of our main, main project cars here is our 1972 Chevelle provided by Chef Ramsey. This is actually his car. Uh, another project car that we have in this class, right past me, if everybody would split, is our Corvette back here. That's actually Mr. Pitt's car. Mr. Pitt is right there, the man with the awesome beard. That's Mr. Pitt, that's his car. He got it last summer for about $350 as a frame. Since then, he LS swapped it and has now been working on it. Uh, it does run sometimes, but right now it doesn't because the fuel pump is broken. We had to get that fixed. Um, right now, the Chevelle has a vacuum problem, meaning it's not getting air somewhere. So that means we have to go in there, we have to figure out where that is, and we have to patch it. Huh? It's a time oh, I'm sorry. It's a timing issue. My mistake. I don't. I haven't worked on the Chevelle. I don't know. I have worked on the Corvette. So, in this class and throughout high school, you're gonna find out shop classes. Uh, a lot of people say that shop classes are male dominated. That's not true. Uh, a lot of females actually have actually taken this class. Right now, we do have a female in here, Tia Bailey. She's one of our better technicians here. She's one of our better technicians. We had a female last year uh, or the year before. I can't remember which one, who actually came in here got all 10 ASC certifications and got a Swope family internship at the dealership. So that's an awesome opportunity to take. With the Swope family, we do a co-op, meaning you can have a job while uh, school's happening. With that being said, uh, you come in here, probably first to second, knock out the class time, then fourth and fifth, you actually go to Swope family dealerships and you work, and it counts as a class credit. So not only do you have a job and are getting paid, but you're also getting a class credit for it. So it's kind of like you're getting a class credit and getting paid. It's a double win for you. And it's a win for them because it looks good on your record. So, with that being said, uh, you can bring your own cars in here as well. Uh, you have to get the form signed by Mr. Pitt, your mom and dad, and a school administrator. Once that happens, uh, right now, one of our uh, students here, Matt, has brought his Altima in. And everybody's working on it. If you don't want everybody working on it, just tell Mr. Pitt, and Mr. Pitt will strictly enforce that. Uh, he's very strict about that. So... This is our Ford Exploder. The reason why we call it an Exploder instead of an Explorer is because every time we try to start it, it runs for like two seconds, makes a loud pops, and dies. So we, we don't actually know what's wrong with it right now other than that it's, it's misfiring. So with that, um, as you can see, two of our uh, shop buddies and James are working on this car right now trying to figure out the problem. Right now they're troubleshooting. Um, are there any questions about our Ford Exploder? Any questions at all? Alrighty, if you'll come with me, I'll show you all the Chevy Impala. So this is uh, Chef Ramsey's 1972 Chevelle. Uh, with this car, we took the engine out and the radiator. We rebuilt the engine, actually. Uh, we put it back in, as you can see with the new, with the fresh, nice looking parts, we have put new components in there. So therefore it runs. Right now there's a timing issue, meaning that it misfires here and there. We have to get that fixed. Um, our friend Gabe here went to start it one day, put starter fluid straight in the intake, blew up in his face, literally, like fire in his like mouth, pretty much. Um, we did take the radiator out. Uh, the radiator comes right here. We took this off. Uh, the, last, the last part took this off, took the radiator out. You can see right here, uh, not really too good. It's very thin, very uh, fine. This, uh, we did take it out. We replaced it. So are there any questions about the 1972 Chevelle? That concludes our time here. Okay, if you guys just want to file in, come on, don't be shy. We'll get people on this side too. Yeah. We're making half so cool. Come on in. Don't break anything. It's a little expensive. Okay, so uh, my name is Gabby. I am a senior at North Harden High School. I am MA certified, phlebotomy certified, and EKG certified. My name is Chloe. I am a senior at Central Harden. I am MA certified and EKG certified, and I'm working on my pharmacy certification and my phlebotomy certification. Is there anyone interested in the healthcare pathway? <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just going to explain the classes that we all have to offer. 
and if you are interested in the pathway, the classes that you will need to take. So for your freshman year, you have to take principles and health and science. That class is just the basics, the platform that you guys will need for the rest of the future classes. And then your sophomore year, we have emergency procedures and medical terminology. In emergency procedures, that class gets more hands-on and you do become BLS certified, so that's like CPR, things like that. And then your junior year, we have MA, which is this class right here. And we also have a new class that we have to offer, which is a medical administration. And then for your senior year, we have phlebotomy, EKG, and pharmacy. And then we also have classes that aren't certification classes, and we have advanced pre-nursing. In that class, you basically need to go to different doctor's offices and learn real-world situations. And then we have medical math, in which I recommend that class taking it your senior year. That way you can earn your senior math credit. And that class is an easier alternative than most. And then if you're going to take pharmacy, don't take medical math because you're already learning it in pharmacy. And you also have to take anatomy to be, um, be a completer of your pathway. Yes, a completer. And then also, if you don't want to take like pharmacy and phlebotomy and EKG, you don't have to take them all. You can just pick the one that you want to take. All right, so now we're going to walk around the M&A classroom. We're going to do a circle loop kind of thing. So now this class is our phlebotomy, EKG, and pharmacy. This is our phlebotomy, EKG, and pharmacy. So if you look behind you, those are where we do our EKGs. We have three beds in total, three EKG machines. At the beginning of the trimester, you practice on the, on the dummies, the placements of the EKGs. And then after you pass a skills test with the Ms. O'Daniel, do, you do practice on each other. And it's the same thing with phlebotomy. At the beginning of the trimester, you practice on the fake arms. And then later, after you pass your test, you practice on each other. And then pharmacy, pharmacy is a two-trimester class. The first trimester is just learning all the information you need. And then you have to get a certain grade in that class to go on to pharmacy two. And that is where you actually go to the pharmacy and you start working at a pharmacy and learn that way, hands-on stuff. Exactly. All right, we're gonna walk this way now. Right here's the arms, like they said. You'll practice on the arms first, and then right now, then you'll practice on each other, taking blood from each other. Um, they're actually learning right now how to take blood out of an arm. So we're gonna keep our voices down when we go next to them. And then over there is where the, the blood taking actually happens. Inspect my needle. So we do have one of the babies that we do practice on in emergency procedures. I'll show you guys, and if you guys want to, you guys can try it as well. It's not very... Any, it's not anything drastic. So basically you just do this, and if the light is green, that means that you're doing the right compressions and there's blood flow going to the brain. But if there's red, then they're not getting enough blood flow. And they're, yeah. Does anybody want to try it? Here you go. Yep, make sure you've got a good rhythm going. That's rhythm <laughs> it's important for us to make sure that all of the students that are 8th graders that have the option to choose Hardin County Schools know what options they have. Uh, many years ago, those opportunities were not presented to students. Uh, even myself, as a former student of Hardin County Schools, did not have the same options that are available now. But now we have a plethora of options, and in, in, in fact, we're probably more opportunity rich than we've ever been. So students are here today visiting the career pathways that are offered here at EC3 as well as at John Harden High School with our criminal justice pathway. Uh, we know that students have even more options at their high school in the agriculture, business, family consumer sciences, JRTC, as well as in the arts fields that they can choose from. Um, and they'll get an opportunity to tour their individual high schools um, before that they actually attend there as freshmen. Uh, but we just take this opportunity during this week to give our students an inside look at to what our pathways can offer them in recognized industry certifications. Um, potential job uh, opportunities in co-op and or internships and so it's just a, a day to share uh, to get their mind spinning and thinking uh, before they do the scheduling process uh, that will happen in approximately uh, two, two to three weeks of right after we get back from our, our Christmas break students will meet with an individual counselor one-on-one -on -one to make decisions about what their course sequencing would look like uh, for their freshman year and even into their future as they graduate high school. Hey. 
That's the worst student I got. <laughs> Now, all right, guys, it's awesome to see you guys. I'm glad you come in to, uh, to Building Construction Technology. That's the name of this class, Building Construction, Te Construction Technology. My name is Mr. Hall. All right, and this is definitely the coolest class you'll be in. I promise you. I promise you uh, it's the coolest. You're doubting me right now. You're doubting me. I'm telling you it is. All right? All right, so what we do, we teach you how to build things in here. And not just build things, but how to wire things. Uh, how to wire uh, in your house, how to, basically everything in your house you'll know how to wire, uh, some basic plumbing, and, and once again, basic construction. So w when we start out in, in this class, we start out small. We just build something real small like a birdhouse or something, something for you to take home, show your parents and so forth. Then we'll just build a stool or something else small, once again, something else that you can just take home and, and uh, show your parents. And then we, then we start building a model house, kind of like this right here. And uh, and and you build it. You, you figure out you figure out how to design it, and you start you cut all the wood and you build it yourself. And then we move the little stuff out of the way. And inside our shop, we actually build a real house inside of our shop. And you guys will build every bit of it. We built by you guys, okay? Uh, but not only building, uh, but we also uh, once again we wired up and, and so forth. So and, and if you got if you take me in the springtime, we try to go out to Habitat for Humanity. Who's heard of Habitat for Humanity? Raise your hand. All right, it's a community organization uh, that builds houses uh, uh, inside your, inside Hardin County here. And we'll actually not go to the classroom, but we'll actually drive out uh, to the job site and we'll literally help them build a house. And so that's that's pretty awesome. All right, so, so how many of you see houses going up, being built all everywhere across Hardin County? It's just, it's just crazy, right? And there's there's house, houses going up everywhere, and so, the, so you know what that means? That means there's a huge, huge need for construction workers. All right, not just here in Hardin County, but across the whole state, and, and not across the whole state, but literally across the whole nation, there's a shortage of construction workers. So I, I want you to tell me what's, what's some things that construction workers do? What are some trades? That's construction workers do. Go ahead, sir. They build things just like this right here. They, they, they frame houses. What else do they do besides frame houses? Do you move in when it looks like this? No? All right. What else does it need? What is it? Furniture. All right. Furniture. What else? Sir? Electricity. Electricity. Electricians. I'll, I'll tell you, electricians are the coolest people on the planet because I'm one of them. All right? All right. Go ahead. It needs a roof on it. Exactly right. Roofing system. What else, sir? Plumbing. What it, plumbing? Yes. If you, electricity and plumbing, those those all crucial things that you gotta have. Tell me that thing that twirls around inside your house. What's that called? Fan. A fan. All right. All right. So, so I want you. So everything we're naming, I want you to know these two guys here that I have that's already took my electrical class can wire up everything that we're talking about. What do you what do you plug your phone chargers into? And what wall outlet called a receptacle, these guys can wire it. All right, the ceiling fans we're talking about, these guys can wire it. So when you turn on a light switch in your, in your room, what do you expect to come on? The light. the light. These guys can wire it. Okay. All right, what, what, any of you guys got a gray box that has a whole bunch of breakers in it? All right, where's it located at? Garage, okay. All right, so I want you to know these guys can wire up anything inside your house that's electrical, these guys can wire, and that's pretty awesome to do. But they're going into the construction trade. They're going to be, they're going to be uh, in the construction industry. But even if they wasn't, how can this benefit them? How can a class like this benefit them, even if they're not going to construction? Like, if they have their own house and uh, something ends up going wrong with the wiring. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. How many plan on, on your one, owning your own home one day, right? Every one of us are, right? All right, so just like he said, so if something goes wrong inside a house, they can, they can work on it themselves. What, and what does that do when they work on it themselves? Well, it saves them money. You're exactly right. All right, so because I'm an electrician, all right, and I own an electrical contracting business, so when I come to your house, you call me to come to your house, it's automatically $75 just for me to show up. That's what I charge, and, 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 I, and I get it all the time, all right? I, I charge them people that all the time. And so I show up, and just say you got a breaker that's tripped, and all I do, I'm there five minutes, I turn on a breaker, and then I leave. How much do I charge them? Seventy-five dollars. I'm just there five minutes. Guess who's smiling as they're walking out, to, going to the driveway to get my truck and leave? Yes, absolutely, I am. Absolutely, I am. 
because I just made $75. So if you know how to do that yourself, just like you said, if you know how to do that, then you save that money. All right? All right, so we're on... I just, uh, you can take this as a freshman, and, and we're going to have some fun with you, okay? We're not, I'm not just going to talk to you. I'm going to have some fun with you. Yes, sir, yes, uh, and, uh, and so if you, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. But you can take this as a freshman, and that's to take it all the way through your high school career, okay? All right? So we're going to have a nail driving competition is what we're going to do. We're going to see who can drive the nail the fastest into the wood. Now, in my intro class, I got 20 males and two females, and we had a nail driving competition, and guess who won? Female, Female did. Guess who won and gave a thousand excuses why they lost? Female. The males, all right? So we're going to see between you guys who's, who's the fastest nail driver, okay? All right, I need two people. I need two people. Come on, come on. Let's go. Oh, we got a new champion. We got a new champion. All right, over here. Come on. Oh, you there, you Wait, where are my girls? Ah. <laughs> Ooh, barely, barely, barely. All right, ladies, one of you ladies. Come on, girl. One of you ladies, come on. Come on. You got this. You got this. You got this. All right, all right. All right. All right, listen to him. He will tell you when to go. All right, go. Go. All right, all right, all right. Next, next, next. Come, have, have you been yet? Have you been? All right, somebody hasn't been yet. Somebody hasn't been. Come on. All right, have his time. Have, yeah, you good, 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 good. Yeah, you all right. Anyone you want. Anyone you want. Ready? Ready? Go. Uh, two minutes, all right. So we got one more, one more. Who hasn't win yet? Who hasn't win? She's the champion. Oops, sorry. All right, you ready? All right, on your mark. Get set. Go. Oh, man. All right, all right. All right. Who wants to see her go against your teacher? Yes. Yes, all right. Come on, come on, come on up. All right, pick you out a nail. A lot of who who wants your teacher to win? Who wants who wants your student to win? All right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. Y'all ready? Go. Oh man, that was so close. Were you on? Were you on? Fantastic job. Fantastic job. All right, last one. Last one. Last one. Hey, who hasn't been yet? Who hasn't been? Go. No. Come on. No. You got this. You got this. You ready? All right. She's the champ. Okay. All right, ready? On your mark, you set, go. Oh, 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 it bent. Both of them bent. Both of them bent. Go to that one. Go to that one. All right, all right, all right. Here's the check. Here, here's the check. All right. All right, guys. What's the name of this class? All right. What, what, what's my name? What's my name? Who's the coolest teacher? Uh, that's right. That's what I'm talking about. Y'all have a fantastic day. Thank you guys for coming. All right, so this is our main lab. We like to call it our internship lab or even our project lab. What we do in here is we do a lot of our fun things when it comes to the hardware. If you see back there, that rack over there is actually something that Mr. Allen was working on. And that, he's just trying to get a server up and running so that we can learn virtual machines before we can actually before we actually like work with them over here you see two all right you see two of our interns we're ac are actually working on both of these computers just trying to get them up and running we've had difficulty with them for about a week now uh i just don't know why they just don't want to turn on real quick as well how many of you all saw the tvs when you were walking in these buildings so those tvs are actually programmed by these little devices called raspberry pis which I think might interest you as well, is actually the program, or, I'm sorry? I know what that is, actually. Yeah, Linux, everything like that, Python? Uh, no, I meant the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, I was meaning like the, that's the computer language we use for it, is Linux and stuff like that. Oh. Uh, real quick, also, if you see on that back TV, is actually, it's running a Raspberry Pi. It's running Minecraft and stuff like that. Another thing, too, is we offer two different internships like Mr. Allen was talking about. 
Our internships are with Brandenburg Telecom, which this one is unpaid. And what you do is you just hook this router up to that left, or to what we have on that left screen over there. And you just see if it works. If it does, it sends out a signal, everything like that. You send it back to the company and everything's good. If not, then it gets scrapped. Real quick, I'll also show you, this is one of the things you get to do as a programmer, is you get to program these little things called Bobots. It's not much, but it still does take a lot just to program all of this stuff. Our other internship is also with the Hardin County School Board themselves. If you all have noticed, we went one to one this year, which means for every one student is one Chromebook. And with that can, be, can come lots of damage. And what we mean by that is broken screens, broken keyboards, everything like that. And to show you one of these methods is Robert. What he's gonna do is he's gonna take a screwdriver to the back of this Chromebook, and he's just gonna push on the back of it and pop out that keyboard. I'll let you pass this around and just see it real quick. Something that I will say is that that internship is actually a paid internship. What we've experienced is about $400 to $500 extra a month on top of our, on top of our after school jobs, such as you know working at Walmart, fast food, all that stuff. So it's, it's just really good experience on top of also getting paid, which I don't know who wouldn't. I will also say, Please do not do that to your Chromebook. I do not want to go to the Annex building tomorrow and see that there was a broken Chromebook with a broken keyboard snapped in half from JTA. I will not be the one responsible for it. I will put full responsibility on you because I'm giving you this warning. So real quick, do I have any quick questions about any of the four pathways that we offer here? All right, so real quick I will say if you want to be here in one of these pathways as soon as possible. It's gonna be your sophomore year. The reason why is because you have to take either digital literacy part A and B your freshman year. So when March comes around, if you wanna be here, make sure to put that on there. And with that, I'll go ahead and hand you over to your tour guide. All right, hey guys, I'm Mr. Robbins. I'm the principal here at EC3, and I'm gonna be talking to you all about the Academy program. Anybody ever heard of the Academy program? No? All right, well our Academy program is our early college access program. That means that students in this program have the opportunity to earn high school diploma and their associate's degree at the same time. What's an associate's degree? Anyone know? Yes. It is the first degree you can get. How long do you think an associate's degree takes to get? Yep. Two years. It's the two-year degree. Okay. Above an associate's degree is the bachelor's degree. So our students have the opportunity, again, to earn a high school diploma and an associate's degree or two-year college degree at the exact same time. And that degree comes from Elizabethtown Community Technical College. That degree is worth the same as any degree from anywhere. Okay, it doesn't it matter where it's like University of Kentucky, Western Kentucky University, UofL, ECTC's two-year degree is worth the exact same. Okay, and our students have the opportunity to do so in our program. Now, to do that program, obviously as we know, that things in life are not free. Well, in this program, the dual credit college classes do cost money. They actually cost about $72 per credit hour. And our students take two semesters worth of classes a year, and in each semester of those courses, they take anywhere between 12 to 15 college credit hours. Okay, so if you do the quick math on that, you can roughly start to see that each semester's worth of courses cost about $1,000, okay, just a little bit less than that. Um, and so our students do have to have a way to take care of that. Now, this program was created to create an equal playing field across our district as well. Meaning that students that come from uh, families that are eligible for free and reduced lunch continue to allow get these classes paid for by the district. Our district is doing that. So we don't want this program to be out of someone's reach because of financial obligation. So our district has committed to doing so. So that is phenomenal. So now we're talking about college for two years being free for somebody. Okay, our state of Kentucky is already doing that um, within a work ready scholarship program, so that's good. So, we're just doing that in a high school uh, uh, setup because of our Board of Education is committed to doing that for students that, that reach eligibility. Now, to do so, our students do have to maintain a certain GPA to be eligible for that tuition uh, coverage as well as even to get into the program. The, tuition, uh, the, the GPA that our students must have is a 3.0 GPA. Your GPA in Hardin County Schools is measured on a 4.0 scale, meaning 4.0 is the highest you can get. 
So if you had a 4.0 GPA, that means what kind of grades would you have? All A's. All A's. Okay? So a 3.0 GPA means you have what? B's are better, right? So understand that that's where we stand on a GPA standpoint. So we do look for students to have a 3.0 GPA in this program. The next thing that we look for in our students is having uh, an ACT score with benchmarks. It is your college entrance exam, okay? This is an early college access program. That means we must have an ACT score for our students to get in. So our students must take the ACT prior to being accepted. And then the last marker measure we look at is for our students is already to have uh, a high level of math completed. Now, again, dual credit, high school credit, college credit at the same time. In our district, the reason why we created the academy program is EC3 is to create an equal playing field. So I'm just going to kind of throw out a scenario for you. All right. So let's say at North Harden High School, there's a teacher, and I'm going to make up a teacher. Let's call her Miss Jones. And let's say Miss Jones is a dual credit history teacher at North Harden High School. Miss Jones is in her 27th year of teaching. 27 is the magic number for teachers. That means that they can retire. So let's say Miss Jones decides, well, I'm done teaching. I'm ready to enjoy retirement. I'm going to go ahead and retire. So if Miss Jones retires, that means the dual credit history class does what for future students? It goes away. It's gone. She was the teacher that was teaching it. Unless someone at North Harden can get really lucky or, or find the next credential teacher, that means that the class is gone. So that means that all the students that would be wanting to take that class would not have that option. So that's not fair to the students, is it? Well, in this program, we've created that equal playing field. So all our students have the equal access to dual credit, and it doesn't matter what high school they come from because they can take all those courses here. We partner with ECTC. They send professors over to help teach those classes to us. So our students have college teachers and high school teachers teaching their dual credit classes. The other thing that they have access to all right, in this program is resources from ECTC. Because they are a college student, they have resources from ECTC, they can use their library, they can use their facilities, they have access to, uh, to, to their tutors and their study halls, a, a math lab, and so on. Okay? So again, our students are high school students and college students at the exact same time. I already told you all about the cost of the program and how our district is helping to support that. So we don't, again, it's about creating equal access for all. The, the program is only offered to high school juniors. Okay, so you must be a high school junior to get in because you must finish the coursework prior to getting into our program. And then your school day is a little different. Okay? Donna will tell you about her classes. She, you have classes on Monday, Wednesday, and some on Tuesday and Thursday, right, Donna? Yeah. They're not the same classes, are they? No. In, right now in school, you all are used to having the same exact classes Monday through Friday, right? Well, in college, you take different courses on different days of the week. And for our students, they're typically done with their college coursework by 1145. And then after 1145, some of our students choose to go back to their home high school, maybe to take on band, choir, ROTC, other course pathways, maybe take a PE class or two. They can choose to do that. Some of our students choose to stay here and take on some of our pathway courses that you learned about today. Some of our students choose to stay here and just use it as a study hall. Okay, our study hall is a great option for students, especially those that may have extracurricular activities after school that they're, they're dedicated to, like sports or, like I said, band or music. Some students have a part-time job. And so the great opportunity about study hall is that our students have, can get all of their homework done during the day so they have more free time in the evenings to do the things that they need to do. All right, so our program has that option as well for them. Again, is our program easy? No. It is rigorous. It is hard. The students that achieve and do well in our programs aren't always the smartest students in school, but they are the hardest working students in school. So you've got to have a level of commitment to be able to put in the work, to put in the time, to dedicate, dedicate yourself, and those are the students that are typically successful in our program. We've got a couple of things I want to talk to you all about. So just r real quick, so if, if you learned something today, give me one clap. Just, just one, we got to count. Remember, we've got to be able to count. All right. If you learned something today, that was one clap. All right. If you liked something that you saw today, give me two claps. All right. Why were we here today? Why were we here today? Right. This this is kind of the big question. Some of you are like, I have no clue. You know, Mr. Shane said, get on the bus. I said, okay. I walk on the bus. I I don't even know where I'm at. What town am I in? Where am I? All right. So 
just to make sure everyone knows, I mean, we're here at the Hardin County Schools Early College and Career Center. This is high school, okay? So make sure this is high school, and every single one of you have the opportunity to come here to EC3 to take on the pathways that you saw, okay? The one pathway, our criminal justice pathway, is at John Harden High School. That's also eligible to you all. But this isn't all that is eligible to you. You all will at some point, I think, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think at some point you all will do a visit to North Harden High School and you all will get to see some of the things that they have there outside of what we offer. Other course pathways in business, agriculture, family consumer sciences, JROTC, the band, the choir, the arts, all of those types of things. You came today so that you can at least start to think and get your wheels spinning a little bit about some of the opportunities that are available to you as a high school student. We opened our doors where you all were kindergartners. When you first started school, we opened our doors here at EC3. Okay, so we've been here for quite a while. Some of you have had siblings that have come through our school. Some of you that have had siblings that come through our school are doing things in that field right now because of the things that they learned here. Some of you have siblings that are doing something different than what they learned here, and that's okay too. And that's really the whole picture of why we present pathways to you. We know ultimately at the end of the day, you may not pick what you do for the rest of your life because of what you do here, but you may figure out what you don't wanna do, and that's just as powerful. There's no reason to waste your time on something that doesn't interest you, that is not gonna provide you with happiness and success that you're looking for. But you are very lucky for the opportunities that are available to you all. They were not available to me as a high school student when I graduated North Harden High School many years ago. Okay, they were not available, but now they are. So you all are very lucky, and we hope that you take advantage of those opportunities. How do you get to EC3? Not physically, because physically a bus will bring you here, but how do you get in here? We look at three things, okay? And they're all part of our work ethic standards. Attendance, behavior, and grades. We look at those three things to get you in. Now I tell you this because I want you all to understand that it's not too late now that if you have issues with any of those three things to start working on them. You can start now, it's never too late. We have, we've had issues with students before that had issues all the way up through their sophomore year that then started working on them and we got them in their junior year. People can change if you choose to. We hope that you choose to make the change for the better to open up doors for you. We're not interested in closing doors, we're trying to open doors for opportunity. But it starts with you because only you can control those three things. Attendance, behavior, and grades. Why do we do it? Attendance, it's all tied to jobs, okay? Nobody wants an employee that shows up half the time, I promise you. You have the best teacher in the world, but Mr. Lohman is not gonna keep that best teacher if they only show up half the week, okay? You could be the best computer programmer there is, but Microsoft is not gonna keep you if you show up half the time. You can best be the best welder there is, but they're not gonna keep you, you only show up half the time because the person that shows up every single day will work circles around you. Showing up, attendance is huge, okay? School's not that hard if you just show up. Behavior, our students that come to EC3 come from Central, John, and North, all here in the same building. If you can't get along with people that you've been growing up with all this time, can, are you gonna be able to get along with people you haven't? I don't know, that's yet to be seen. But we're more likely to take a risk on you if you have already proven that you can. Behavior is a big deal. You gotta be able to get along with others. That's what the work life is like. I mean, out in the, out in the real world, you gotta be able to get along with others. Behavior is a big deal. And obviously grades, because the number one goal for all of us is to make sure that we get you, and hopefully it's your goal too, is to graduate. You gotta graduate school. If you don't have the grades, then you're not going to. Everything that you saw here, 
And those other things that I talked about that are available at North Harden High School, like choir and band and ROTC, they're all elective classes. The word elective means you don't have to have it. What you do have to have is math, science, social studies, English. Elective classes are optional. So you must be on track for graduation to be able to take our courses. You must be successful. If you fail English, you're going to lose chances to come here. If you fail math, you're going to lose chances for your elective classes anywhere. Whether it be PE or band or welding or nursing, you'll lose those options. So we use those three marks to measure attendance, behavior, and grades to decide who gets in. Again, we're taking students from all over. You're our third middle school this week. All middle schools will tour. We take students from all across our district. We have students that move here to come because of EC3 opportunities. We have students that leave that school up the road over there, the one that's got that one big ugly letter about it. They leave there to come here. And we welcome them. We'll take them. It is a competition to get in. Sometimes our programs only have so many seats available. So let's say that everybody in here wanted to do welding. Everyone in here wanted to do about 200 students. Everyone wanted to do welding. How many students do you think in this group are actually going to get picked? About 20. OK? So life is a competition. Sorry. It's just the way it is. So if you're not trying to be the best in everything that you do, then you're going to get left behind. I'm super competitive. You can ask a couple of these guys that actually play football for me. They'll tell you. I'm super competitive. Okay? I don't care if we're playing a game of flip coin. I'm going to try to beat you. And I may knock you down to beat you. But I'm competitive. And I want to be the best. So you should try to be the best too. Because in this world of competitiveness, the ones that are on top are on the bottom. So strive to be great, strive to be better. If this is something you want, we want you here. And we'll make it work for you. But we do all of this, guys, because very soon you will be scheduling your high school courses. It's hard to believe, right? That you're going to be in high school next year. Time flies. And so we're going to be scheduling your high school courses. So your homework today is to go home and to talk to an adult about what you learned today. Talk to somebody about it. If there's not an adult at home, that's OK. Talk to one of your teachers when you leave today about it. My hope is that you're going to make a decision for yourself based on the things that you saw that hope to lead something. Please do not make a decision based off of your friends or your boyfriend or girlfriend, because in a year it's going to change anyway. Make a decision that is in the best interest of you. But I hope that the visit today helped to open your eyes to a little bit and maybe to help to eliminate some things. Because if you walked down into that phlebotomy lab today and you saw blood and you thought, I can't do that, guess what? Don't sign up for nursing. But you may sign up for a medical administrative assistance because they do the billing side of things. So it's still medical, but it's on the other side of things. It's not patient care. If you walked into our welding lab and you said, that's loud and it's dirty in here. I don't want to do that. Well, then don't sign up for it because guess what it's going to be when you come here? Loud and dirty. It's not going to change. We look for growth. We look for growth. So there are a lot of students that have made total turnarounds from this. You know, she made the mention like talking about College View. We have students here that have been to College View. Okay? And are very successful. We understand that life happens and poor decision makers. I was a teenager too. I'm not perfect. I've made all kinds of mistakes in my life. I still make them. It's the idea that am I going to continue to make those mistakes or am I going to try to fix them? So if you're going to be on the way of fixing them and you're going to work to improve it, then that's, we'll look for that. Okay? And if you're a tough case, then guess what? I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a phone. I'm going to call people. I'm going to say, do I take a chance on this kid or not? Okay? The world is competitive. I'm sorry. It's just the way that it is. Not everybody that wants the job gets the job. Okay? I don't care what you, what you see on the news. Not everybody that wants the job gets the job. It's the way it is. 
All right? I appreciate you all. I know that I got to talk to a lot of groups. Behavior, phenomenal. I appreciate you all, okay? So thank you for being attentive today. Thank you for uh, coming, and hopefully you learned something and you're walking away with something. So I'm going to turn this...